Hey Cherubs, many of you have been asking me for videos with more substance, so let's revisit mental status screening tests. The Minicog is my favorite. As I've said before, it's free and it's fast. It only takes a few minutes, which is great if you're busy, and if you work in the healthcare field, you're busy. Uh, <clears throat> let's move on. Supposedly the sensitivity ranges from 76 to 99%, and the specificity ranges from 89 to 93%, which I think is fantastic. I mean, if I had those kind of scores, I'd apply to med school. The test is simple enough such that you don't need to print out a form. Although there are suggested lists of words, you can probably make up your own. I don't recommend using words that are related to each other. For example, red, white, and blue isn't a good set. Also, don't use a bunch of things that are right in front of the patient. The back of this form has a nice big circle drawn for the patient, but in all honesty, I like giving them a blank piece of paper and having them draw their own circle for me. Many patients draw clock faces that are too small to fit numbers and hands comfortably, and that'll immediately tell you that there's something wrong with their executive functioning with respect to planning. Alternatively, you may need to screen the patient for Parkinsonisms. Note that we ask patients to draw 10 past 11. This is an important distinction when you compare this clock drawing to that of the slums. If your patient isn't paying attention or doesn't know how to tell time, Here's the numbers 10 and 11, and draws arrows to those, that's incorrect. Contrast this with the slums, in which the patient is asked to draw the time 10 minutes to 11 o'clock, in which case the arrows will be pointing to 10 and 11. I suspect that it's for this reason that in the minicog, if you check the scoring rubric, the arrows don't need to be the correct length. Some literature will tell you that one of the good aspects of the minicog is that it's relatively free of cultural bias. While this may be true, it's not accurate to say that it's free of cultural influences. There are some cultures that don't value time as much as Westerners do, and as such, won't score well on a clock drawing. As an illustration, I've set up family meetings only to have family members trickling in two to three hours late, and the family wouldn't proceed with the meeting until everyone was present. In my culture, this is considered disrespectful. But when I inquired about this, I was told, the purpose of a meeting is to, you know, meet with other people, so why would we start a meeting without all the important stakeholders present? You Westerners are the ones who have it backwards. You invented this circle, and now you're slaves to an idol of your own creation. What's wrong with you? So, uh, yeah, don't just assume that clocks are familiar to everyone. Compared to the other tests that I've discussed, the minicog is relatively easy. That's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, ideally you don't want to administer a test that's so difficult that your patient gives up halfway through. On the other hand, remember that these are screening tests. If you're administering this as a screening test, then that probably means that you're trying to decide between whether your patient has mild cognitive impairment or dementia. So if you give out a test that's so trivial that the vast majority of people pass, <coughs> step 2 CS, <coughs> then that's not helpful. A more difficult test allows you to separate the A students from the B students, so to speak. But I already know that you guys are all A students. Any questions? What? No, I'm, I'm not gonna draw a clock for you. Jimmy, why does everyone keep asking me that?